It is 102 days till the man burns and today we're talking about introverts because Burning Man can sound like a bit of a tough place for introverts. You know, there's tons of people and they're not your regular kind of people. These are the people that are gonna chat to you. They want to chat to strangers. People will be doling out hugs to strangers. And for an introvert, that can all sound a bit intimidating, but at the same time, kind of nice. So if you are an introvert, you probably already know that introvert does not necessarily equal shy. Introverts can just kind of come across as shy or it can be like a side effect of being introverted. So I do have a video for tips for shy people. I know I keep saying like, I'll try and link it if I could figure out how to, but I have not figured out how to, I'm working on it guys. So I will link that video if I can figure out how. Being introverted really means that your social activity fuel tank, the amount of time you can spend like socializing with people, it's a bit smaller. You need a bit more time to recharge from all this social interaction. So how can you survive when it feels like Burning Man is just one huge social event? First thing is to be aware of what your needs actually are. For some people, it's just having enough downtime and alone time or relaxing time to kind of refuel themselves. Some of you will want more sleep. Some of you might just want to stick to less busy areas where it's not so hustle bustle. There's not like a million things going on at the same time. So try and figure out what your needs are, what you think you're gonna need the most while you're at Burning Man so that you can prepare for it. And even though there is this mantra of like no expectations, I think if you're introverted or you have a specific thing like that, then it is worth going into it prepared. If alone time is something that you think you'll need, then bring some stuff to do with that alone time. Because otherwise you're just kind of gonna be sitting places being alone and that might be great for you, that might be what you need. But for some people, you're just gonna be bored. Your usual alone time back in the real world involves doing something, you know, having a hot bath, catching up on a TV series, reading a book, making things. So you might not be able to do everything at Burning Man, you know, you're not gonna be able to watch Game of Thrones, but you could read the Game of Thrones books. You could bring along, you know, a puzzle book or some crafty things that you could do that don't require like having a whole lot of stuff. So think about things that you could pack and bring along with you that are gonna keep you entertained if you do want some downtime. You might wanna put a bit more effort into your camp so that you know it's a bit more comfortable if you want to be spending time just hanging out there. So think of things that are just gonna make it more pleasurable for you to be hanging out at camp. And think about your camp layout as well. There's an unwritten rule that if your camp is like facing out into a street, it's a bit more public, like people might say hi as they're going past, people might stop in for a little chat. And if you have your camp facing inwards, it's considered a bit more private and you know people won't just kind of wander in or be like hey how are you doing as they're going past and it might be a bit difficult you know if you're camping with friends you might want your camp facing out so that when you are feeling sociable you do kind of have all these people you can people watch but it will still be nice to have some part of your camp that's you know a bit more private where you can really like get away from people if you need to Walk-in camping could be a great option for you. It's the section of camping. It's like right on the outer ring on one side and you cannot drive there. You can't take vehicles there. So you do have to trek all of your gear out there. But as a reward, you get like a much quieter camping space and it tends not to be hugely populated. So you'll be able to have room around you. And even if you're camping with other people, it doesn't mean you can't bring along, you know, a small spare tent and set it up in walk-in camping so that you really have somewhere to go if you are feeling just really burned out and tired and you just want to be really, really alone, then you could head out to your secret little camping spot at walk-in camping. Obviously tell your campmates that you're doing that because they might worry if you end up going there and not coming back for three days. But that could be an option for some of you. The outer player is a great spot to get some alone time as well. And it's kind of known that that is a spot that people go to to get some quiet time or alone time and just be away from like the hustle bustle of the city. So you'll often find if you go out to the outer player and just find yourself a nice spot to chill out in, that people will leave you alone. Or you know, if people do come and they want to sit with you, you can just say like, oh, I'm just really like having some alone time right now, sorry. And they will probably be fine with it. You can also just go and explore in less populated places. So, you know, go out, check out the art, jump on your bike and just 
cycle around and you'll find plenty of art that doesn't have like huge crowds around it the temple can be another great place because even though there are quite a lot of people at the temple and a lot of people go to see it it's a place for like self-reflection so you can go there and you can get alone time you can kind of chill out and have some downtime there and just reflect on things and think about things and, and relax and people probably won't bother you if you're not going to do the walk-in camping thing then you'll want to be quite selective about where you do camp. Try and avoid really noisy areas or really high traffic areas. So you'll probably be looking for somewhere that's kind of in the outer areas, but the outer ring tends to get quite a lot of traffic, you know, going around. So maybe a street or two in, you might find a nice cozy quiet spot. And then it can just be a little bit less overwhelming with the amount of people that are walking by all the time and the amount of noise going on. You might have a few extra essentials you want to bring along. Lots of people bring earplugs and eye masks so they can get some sleep when they need it. Noise cancelling headphones. Just think about other extra little bits you can bring that are just gonna make it more comfortable for you. You know, maybe like essential oils that you can put a few drops on your pillow and it's like calming and relaxing. Anything you can think of that is gonna make you feel comfortable and happy and nice. If you can bring it, why not? If you're going with friends, they probably already know that you're an introvert and are aware of your needs, but if not, let them know. It's just gonna make things much easier at camp. You know, if all of your campmates keep being like, hey, let's go and do this thing, and you're like, oh no, I need some, like, some downtime right now. You know, they're not gonna be thinking it's weird. They're not gonna be like, why do you never wanna come and do anything? They're gonna be aware that you are just doing the things that you need to do to make sure that you're constantly feeling okay. And you know, if they're all back at camp and they're all having fun together and doing stuff and you need alone time and you're just, you know, chilling on your own away from them, they're not gonna kind of think that you don't wanna hang around with them or something. They're gonna be aware like, oh, you know, you just need your alone time right now and that's fine. It'll just make you feel more free to do the things you need to do without kind of feeling like maybe it's a bit awkward or your campmates are like worrying about why you're doing certain things like sitting alone when everyone's in camp. Remember that it is okay to say no as well and that goes for pretty much anything. So if your campmates want you to come and do something and you're just not up for it, it's fine to say no. If that random person wants to give you a hug and you don't want them to, it's fine to say no. If someone comes and wants to have a conversation with you and you're really not okay with that, it's fine to say no. Don't ever feel pressure to do anything you don't want to do or anything you're not comfortable with. It's really okay to say no. That person that wanted to have a conversation with you, if you just explain to them like, look, sorry, I'm just, I'm being a bit quiet right now, not really up for chatting, they're just gonna go and find someone else to chat with. Like, it's no big deal. It's honestly fine to say no. Look out for quiet, low social interaction workshops as well, things like yoga, meditation, talks on things, because then you can still do things, you can still have fun, but you know that there's not gonna be a huge amount of social interaction involved with it. It's not like you get halfway into a yoga class and you're like, wow, the level of social interaction going on is too much for me. If you have conversation starting problems, then tag along with a more extroverted friend, because They'll deal with that like icebreakery situation of chatting to people and you will just, you know, as a byproduct, <laughs> be involved in the conversation. You are going to have to do the awkward bit to get things started. And then you've got, you know, your catmate as backup and support in case there are awkward silences. Don't forget to drink lots of water, stay hydrated, to eat, to sleep, to do all those things that you need to do to keep healthy. Sometimes if you get dehydrated, then you can feel like things are a bit overwhelming or you can feel not so great and it might just be that you need a drink rather than you need to go and get some sleep or have alone time or something. You might find having a drink of water, having a little snack is going to be enough to just get you back on your feet again. But most importantly, just take time out when you need it. Even if you're out doing something, even if you're halfway through like a workshop or something, if you decide like, you know what, I just wanna head back to camp and chill out, or I just wanna cycle out to the deep player, just have some quiet time, or find a quiet camp to chill out in, do those things. There are some really nice camps as well, like Heebie Jeebie Healers, Camp Mystic. Those are two that are, you know, there's a very like 
relaxed, laid back kind of vibe. That's what those camps are all about. They also do like talks and things. So those can be great camps to go and hang out in if you're feeling a bit burnt out and you just need some like time. They just have this really good relaxed vibe. So yeah, take time out whenever you feel like you need to. It's way better to take it when you feel like you need it than to wait until you are completely socially burnt out, that fuel tank is empty and you literally, you cannot take any more. So I hope this is helpful guys and if any of the rest of you have any tips or tricks or advice for introverts going to Burning Man, then let us know in the comments below and any of you that do come along, I hope you have an absolutely amazing time. And as always, if you see me at Burning Man this year, then feel free to come and say hi to me. Bye guys.